Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the Simplified Airway Risk Index, or the SARI score for short. So this score is a multivariable calculator for determining the difficulty of tracheal intubation. It is scored from 0 to 12, with a score of at least 4 being indicative of difficult intubation. The higher the score, the more difficult to the predicted airway. It's scored from seven different categories, each worth zero to two points, as we see here on our chart. Here we're going to fill this in, discuss the various categories and the point parameters and why they may be predictive of a difficult airway. So let's get started. The first category is binary, mouth opening. So to evaluate mouth opening, we look at the incisor distance, the front two teeth from the maxilla to the mandible, a distance of less then four centimeters is worth one point while a distance of greater than four centimeters is worth zero points. The smaller the mouth opening, the more difficult it is to not only place the laryngoscope safely without hitting teeth, but makes it more difficult to navigate the tongue and put your endotracheal tube in beside it. Next is the thyromental distance. That's from the top of the thyroid to the mentum or the chin in layman's terms. Here we have zero points with a thyromental distance of greater than 6.5 centimeters. One point for a distance of 6.0 to 6.5 centimeters. And two for a distance of less than 6.0 centimeters. So what this tends to indicate if you have a less than six centimeter distance is a more anterior airway, as well as less area in which the tongue can be displaced with attempting a direct laryngoscopy. Now, most people will not sit there with a ruler, and so what we do is we eyeball it, and we look at about three finger breaths distance. Greater than three is good, one finger breath is bad, and two is so-so. Next is the Malampati score. We won't review it again here. I will direct you to the Malampati score video for a quick refresher, but a score of one or two is worth zero points, while a score of three is worth one point, and a score of four, whoops, is worth two points. So fourth on our list is neck movement, and what we're really talking about here is neck extension, or the patient's ability to tilt their chin to the sky. Movement of greater than 90 degrees is worth zero points. 80 to 90 degrees is worth one point, and less than 80 degrees is worth two points. Now again, just like the thyromental distance, most people aren't going to use a caliper to look at how far back the patient can extend their neck. So again, we kind of eyeball this. Many times patients with cervical spinal fusions have very limited neck movement. Some patients with scoliosis or others, say with types of genetic anomalies, may have severe cervical spinal issues and inability to move. It's important to be able to extend the neck as this allows optimal positioning of the patient in what we call the sniffing position. In the sniffing position, we line up the pharyngeal, laryngeal, and oral axes to best visualize the airway through the mouth. Those three axes may be seen in one of our full pictures on the website with a full description. But in order to achieve this, the neck must be able to be extended and have good movement. The less the neck moves, the worse the view may be. Getting towards the end, underbite is the next thing. The patient should be able to sublux their mandible to create an underbite, or again in layman's terms, put their bottom teeth over their upper lip. If they can't do that, so no underbite, sorry, I'm gonna get that out of there. No underbite, they get a one, and zero if they can. Now this is because in order to visualize the glottic opening with laryngoscopy, it requires subluxation and anterior movement of the jaw. Inability of the patient to perform this motion may indicate that there is little room or little joint movement of the jaw in order to obtain a good view during laryngoscopy. Almost to the end, body weight, less than 90 kilograms is worth zero. 90 to 110 kilograms is worth one, and greater than 110 kilograms is worth two. 
Now, I'll be honest, I don't have a good explanation for this as a patient whose proportions are normal, who doesn't have an incre increased BMI, technically by this would be a risk factor. For example, a six foot five lean basketball player who weighs more than 110 kilograms as a function of his height. Uh, I'm not sure why they would be more difficult and I haven't been able to find literature to explain why, but it does come in as part of the scoring system. Now, last but not least is history of difficult intubations. If there's no difficulty, it's worth zero. If there is history of difficulty, then it's worth two. And if it's unsure, it's worth one. Hopefully it goes without saying that if a patient had difficulty with being intubated in the past, it's probable that they may have similar issues again. Now, even if you don't use this as a hard way of evaluating an airway, it is important to take these things into consideration even when just eyeballing a patient as it may influence what tools you use. So even if you aren't going to do a formal evaluation using the SARI system, keep an eye on the patient's anatomy and just kind of keep some of these topics in the back of your mind. So that's all for the Simplified Airway Risk Index or the SARI score. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, please feel free to write to us. Subscribe to the channel by clicking below. Check us out on Instagram at Count Backwards from 10 and stay tuned for the next video.